Welcome back. You're watching Global Eye. G20 Environment and Climate Sustainability Ministers meeting was held in Chennai. The meeting is a reaffirmation of G20 leaders' commitment to tackle climate change. European Commissioner for Environment, Virginia Sinkavichas, who is in India for that meeting, spoke to me earlier on carbon border tax, climate crisis and the environmental impact of the Russia-Ukraine war. I began by asking him about his key priorities and main expectation from India. First of all, it's my pleasure to be here and thank you very much for having me. It's my first uh, visit to India, even so that, you know, we've been working very closely with uh, respective ministers on uh, international fora for the past uh, four years since I'm a uh, commissioner. I think what's extremely important, we've managed to reach a historic, uh, very ambitious agreement. Starting with, uh, you know, Paris Agreement. Uh, going into uh, ambitious agreement that was just uh, in December reached in, in, in Montreal, COP15, on global biodiversity framework, the protection of uh, the high seas, so-called PBNJ agreement. We are advancing very well on, on global plastics uh, agreement. It's great moments. It's moments to celebrate, but the next day when we wake up, we still need to go to, to work and deliver what we have agreed. So I think it's, it's, it's time and my expectation is that we truly focus on implementation. On implementation which is not going to be a, a walk in the park, which is not going to be uh, a, a easy one, but implementation which can bring us even closer together. In understanding the differences, in understanding the different positions, in deepening the cooperation, in strengthening the cooperation in areas like clean tech, batteries, hydrogen, so basically energy and transport transitions, um, uh, our research and innovation, and so on. So I think this implementation should not be seen as some sort of burden because, you know, EU also has quite a number of, of emissions that we need to deal with and we have very ambitious 2030 target and even more ambitious one by, by 2050. But we must see it as an opportunity that can deliver new resilient jobs on the both sides uh, that can put us at the global leadership uh, position with regards to the future technologies and not focusing on the dirty past. Right. Uh, I'd like to ask you about the environmental impact of the Ukraine-Russia war. What is your assessment? Uh, Russia has pulled out of the Black Sea Grain Initiative as well, which will have a big impact on food inflation. But coming specifically to the environment, what is your assessment? So starting with uh, Russia pulling out of, uh, you know, uh, grain uh, agreement is another proof uh, that Russia uh, has been terrorizing the world in all possible means to achieve their imperial uh, ambitions. And, um, you know, the pulling out of the grain deal, first of all, is going to impact uh, uh, most vulnerable countries. Uh, uh, our, our partners uh, outside uh, the EU uh, that is going to be at the verge of, 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 of basically hunger. And this is absolutely unacceptable. Uh, I truly hope that they will uh, change their mind. Uh, international uh, community is working hard to, to, to bring them back into, into the agreement. Secondly, when we look at the war, which is happening for more than 500 days since Russia uh, cowardly attacked uh, Ukraine uh, and keeps on destroying Ukrainian cities, uh, people's uh, lives um, and, 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 and well-being all across Ukraine. Every night there is, uh, you know, uh, uh, rockets and drones uh, launched at Ukrainian uh, cities. Uh, they also deliberately target uh, uh, water treatment facilities, chemical storages, uh, you know that the uh, biggest nuclear power plant in Europe is now under Russian military control and we're talking about the object, nuclear power plant, where not only, you know, uh, people from outside should not be allowed on this kind of object, now people working there, they're basically working with the gun pointed at their head. And the latest event of uh, when Kachovka Dam uh, was, uh, was bombed by, 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 by Russian uh, military is, 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 another, is another proof where basically the whole area is deprived of any possibility for at least eight years 
to have any of the agricultural activities. Uh, the, the, the water, of course, has, has, has sank everything and uh, to clean up it will, it will take years and years. If you look at the mining of uh, Ukrainian fields, Ukraine now is the most mined country in the world. Uh, so the mining it also is going to be to be a generational task. So you know this was a uh, tragic war which already took uh, many innocent human lives. War that was started by Russia only attacking uh, Ukraine. And you know uh, I know that there is always this discussion about the peace and 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 and, and etc. If Ukraine stops to defend, it disappears as a country. And the multilateral order. Uh, that we've been fighting these rules uh, uh, based order disappears as well because that would basically mean bigger country can come and just take with any made up reason part of the foreign country territory without uh, basically respecting any of the international agreements uh, lying into, 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 into the faces of international community and not caring about, about anything else and environmental damage is that are being piled up every every day they're going to have a long-term consequences because we know that environmental damage respects no borders so all of of of, of this pollution at the end of the day will definitely end up at the black sea uh, most of this pollution will stay uh, within the ukrainian ecosystems for many many years and if you look ukraine has been the top country in agriculture uh, for many many years feeding the rest of the world so I don't really think so that these ecosystems will be able to deliver after it's been basically, you know, burned out, uh, mined and, and, and destroyed. So you're saying it would take at least eight to ten years to overturn this damage that has taken place to the ecosystem, to the environment because of the war? It's only Kachovka Dam. It's only uh, Kachovka Dam. But for example, if you look at, you know, I visited some of the territories that, that, uh, that the Russians you know, while uh, moving, moving back, they mined. Uh, so, you know, entire forests and etc. The mining activities are uh, extremely expensive. It requires uh, a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of work. Uh, I don't think so. That can be done so quickly as eight, ten years. So, it 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 depends. And some of the pollution, it will it will stay even 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 longer because, as I said, many chemical uh, uh, storages. Water treatment facilities, uh, they were bombed and, and, and basically, you know, uh, people were, were left uh, uh, without a, a, a water sanitation. Uh, people were left with the exceedances of, 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 of pollution. And that's also something uh, that is not going to be a quick fix. Uh, my final questions to you. The carbon border tax adjustment mechanism that the EU is coming up with, uh, India has concerns around that, how this would... Uh, probably slow down exports from India. This will make some companies uh, non-competitive. How are you addressing some of the concerns that the Indian government has raised? So, uh, first of all, you know, um, we've been working with, with, with our partners uh, all along the way drafting the legislation. Secondly, we've given a long uh, uh, period of, uh, of uh, um, of adjustment to the uh, to the legislation, so uh, three years uh, before it fully kicks in, I think this gives a you know enough time for for uh, our partners to prepare. We're ready to extend uh, uh, you know uh, our our hand and, and and work together with the partners in in order to you know clarify the legislation in order to ensure that it's it's clear and and, and can be fully implemented and don't have a, a disruption. On, uh, on the supply chains. However, I think it's also very important to explain the rationale behind it. Because at the end of the day, if we all committed to climate neutrality, uh, we cannot allow uh, you know, for emissions to uh, you know, uh, move from the EU to other parts of, 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 of the world. Because at the end of the day, when we are facing climate change, when we are facing biodiversity loss, when we are facing pollution, we're talking about the global crisis, about the triple planetary crisis. So if emissions, if even EU does extremely successful work, maybe joined by a couple other bigger economies uh, around the world, and we manage to decarbonize, but the emissions moves to other parts of the world, 
at the end of the day, this planet is still bust. And we all are at, in the same boat. So I think we need to look for the measures uh, that would ensure that we all can successfully uh, fight uh, CO2 emissions. And in the EU, uh, the, 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 the carbon pricing was extremely effective uh, mechanism, ensuring that polluter pays principle is applied. It gives a uh, tax fairness. Uh, it can help you to actually decrease uh, the, the social taxes and putting the taxes on those who are the biggest polluters. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of Global Eye. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.